अरे सर पढ़ाई से डर नहीं लगता लेकिन लेट्स गेट स्टार्टेड All right so I think it makes sense for me to now start uh, diving deep into um what I was working on what kind of idea I had and what makes sense is where you're going to use um chrome extensions for I think a lot of users that I have talked to or people that I have uh, came in contact with are actually trying um you know to to kind of go towards where I want them to basically understanding each and on every API Now again, if you're still not getting the point of having a Chrome extension, I highly recommend you start looking into JavaScript because if you have a solid foundation of JavaScript, this becomes piece of cake. You don't have to worry about anything once you start understanding the background with JavaScript. And I say this again and again and again, you have to be good at JavaScript to understand Chrome extensions. So if nothing is um making sense right now, I highly recommend to give up uh, this whole project for now go back start learning javascript and understanding why and what i'm talking about with that let's go ahead and start uh, looking at uh, the chrome runtime now chrome runtime is an api method uh, which support area functionality that your extension can use the major portion that we talked about was message pass- passing from uh, one place to another which i think i've showed many times if you would like me to uh go deep dive into it again i'll i'll show you a live example that i have uh, pulled up here and then at the same time i have i have been using some of the other methods uh, that you can use in your chrome extension for example i'm just going to give you one simple example all right so here i've installed uh that youtube project that i've been working on and i'm going to hit refresh refresh so it opens up now uh i want to show this on install method but I think I've talked about previously it all depends on your requirements right so my requirement for this project was that I have to you have to open API uh, a screen where it says API so let me actually show you exactly what I'm talking about so if I right click on this and I say options um you have please enter your API subdomain and API key now I want this screen to pop up as soon as user installs my app because if they're working with say pipe drive this is what we're using in this one they have to the the extension have to open the options page regardless which is one of the use cases that you will come across and um this is how I tackle this is uh chrome runtime on installation only so every time i i would refresh this so i refresh again you see how it opens up which takes care of that use case all right so i have copied my subdomain uh actually my api key but here's the subdomain and the api key is right here so once that's in the system it's um uh, saved within our local storage now the reason why i wanted to do this uh, or do this tutorial is to create a uh, pipe drive dashboard for some for some people or say i've seen there's a requirement where you can actually have um you know if you if you have leads coming into your to your um crm or the the stuff that you're using you just want that lead to be uh visible at all times so every time i open my chrome extension it should show me the new leads that came in that day or something that i want to i want to know like you know what's the total of my leads or how much uh money i'm making and all that stuff but th- that's a business side of things whereas learning side of things um we can open the project say this one right here and now you can see all my leads um are showing up here if i pull up my um pipe drive you can see right here we have leads and i'm going to show side by side is what i was trying to do um uh, to basically grasp uh the value in this project so now i can see my leads uh at the same time uh let's go ahead and see how many deals i have so i have 1 2 3 4 deals so if i go into deals now it loads my deal so if i want to know the details of that deal i can click in it inside it and it's going to show up uh which is beyond the scope of this video but i just want to go and give you an overview where the runtime becomes important for us to understand um where it's used or some of the functions that we have here so for example let me go back here so in runtime i've already showed you on install most of the time um sometimes you will you will get like options that you would want to use so um for example on connect would be one so um you know whenever uh Uh, it's fired when a connection is made from either an extension process or content script um some of them would be uninstalled or um on message is again we already saw that um 
on startup would be another one. So uh, fired when the profile uh, when a profile that has this extension installed first startup. This event is not fired when incognito pro profile. So you cannot uh, do anything in incognito mode. And I think there are other options you can use. Um, but it, for, for to give you a background into this, let's uh, take a look at this. So this one is just a small one where um, open options page. So you see there's a method called open options page and I've used this under uninstalled event um, and now it opens up the options page every time I refresh. And to quickly demo it to you, I'm just gonna refresh this project and you guys can see um, it just pops up. Let me go ahead and remove this from here and let's talk about the most important thing that you will come across. I think this video will make a lot of sense once I start showing you what's happening with the interaction between one UI to the background JS and how background JS can respond to that information uh, in the front end, right? So here I have our request and we have a hello world here. Let's go ahead and tag that um, on the bar so we can see there's hello world. But let's go ahead and actually start adding um, if I continue here, let's go ahead and start adding our button, which is uh, click me, which we're gonna click. And again, we don't have to accept that. I just want div with an ID of output. So let's do ID and that'd be output. So now we're gonna send, we're gonna send a click event that's gonna go in the background JS, write some function, which is gonna respond to our um, front end, which is our pop-up JS and kind of work vice versa. Now you can take this and think of it as you're sending a request to a back end and then getting a response back. So the next thing is we're gonna start uh, getting that information here. So let me go ahead and start adding our element. So we're gonna first find, so const button is equal to uh, document dot query selector. And then we can say button, I think it's ID, right? So yep, how about get element by ID? That makes more sense. All right, and now we have to add the output. So const message is equal to document dot get element by ID, which would be our output. So, output. so now what we can do is we can start adding event listener to that button itself. So we can say button dot add event listener, and the listener would be a click. And when somebody clicks on it, what do we need to do, right? First, we're gonna uh, use Chrome Runtime API. So I'm gonna say Chrome Runtime send message and I was waiting for that to <laughs> come up and it's going to say hello from pop up right uh, in the data I think the, the best way to do is just to send uh, something in the background so uh, it can use that information in the background and send a re response back so say if I have a data and I have an array over here say you know apple oranges I can send this to the back end back end will do something and then uh, give us the response back so if I come here I can say uh, we're just going to have response back. So let's just say if I have here is uh, let's do response dot let's just do response for now, and then let's go in our backend JS and then send something back from the background. So if you requested something uh, and then you're getting that data back from an API, right? So we we don't have to console log this. We can say send response. And then this we can send as an object uh, as message received. So this will start showing up into our popup.html because we have configured uh, as an inner text of that div, div that we set up to output. So if I go ahead and refresh this and open this up, now you see the object is coming. So this now object has a message in there. So I can say dot message and then refresh you will see click and message received. Now I can send an array from the back uh, right here. Uh, it shouldn't have any problem. I can say, uh, let's say apple or say orange and it'll still accept it. We just have to loop through it. Uh, let's see if I can find this refresh. And now here, see, you see uh, it's showing us the array as apple and orange because it just took it as a text. Um, so that's how you do message passing. I hope I'm making sense and I'm giving you the information that is required for you to build something. This was the most important thing um, that you will use all times in your React extension. And I hope you're getting a gist of understanding how this works. And I've used the same thing to develop a lot of small tools that I require. I will start demoing it out uh, once I have something ready, I will definitely show this off. But I think f for now, this would give you an, a, an advantage over to understand how to pass messaging from the front end to the back and then do something with an API. You can do, uh, you can also do some, some work here. So you can say fetch and then go to like a JSON placeholder and then um, let's do 
const response and then you can send that response as well so if we go refresh this and now click me it has an object I can say response uh, let's do console log and see what came back so log response and then if I do this service worker and try to see that again so now it's sending us the promise obviously we have to work with the promise but you get the point what i'm trying to say um, i hope you enjoyed this video hit that like button share with your friends and family share with everyone that you know who wanted to learn uh, react js i am working on other stuff as well and i get distracted from other projects as well so i'm really sorry that it's not consistent but i'm trying to make uh, make as many videos as possible 